Hey guys, this is Lockie, and this is the sixth part of my VR tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be expanding upon the advanced object interaction system and adding a door to the world. Here's a demonstration of that. So yeah, you can go up to the door, grab it, pull it around as if it were a real door. Um, there's currently no disconnect point, so I'll maybe do that in the next episode, but that's it for now. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is create a new script, and this is going to be the door script. So open that up. And as it's going to be an expansion upon the held object system, we're going to have to give it a... Next, we're going to do some stuff in update. So if parent does not equal null, uh, we're going to create a few variables again. So vector3 uh, target delta, which will basically just be the direction of the controller from this object. So target delta equals parent dot position minus transform dot position. Uh, next, what we're going to do is just make it so that the uh, y is equal to zero. Uh, if you didn't do this, it would work, uh, but the door, like if you held it from the bottom, it would sort of like move a bit slower, if that makes sense. Um, I can demonstrate it later. Um, next, what we're going to do is get the angle difference. So float angle diff equals vector three dot angle transform dot forward and target delta. So that basically just um, how far off we are from where we want to be facing in degrees. So uh, vector three cross, we're basically just going to get the uh, cross product so that we can figure out which direction we want to be rotating in. Because we've set the target delta dot y to zero, it's only going to return y values in the cross. Um, and basically, like, if you didn't have the cross, it would basically just rotate around in circles. We're just trying to figure out which direction it should rotate in rather than how much it should rotate, if that makes sense. So cross equals vector three dot cross transform dot forward target delta. Now we're going to apply all of this. So get component rigid body dot angular velocity equals cross times angle diff. And you could just leave it at that, but I found time 50f works the best. Um, you can experiment around with that if you'd like. You could put it into a variable, but I've just found that this works the best for me. Um, just, I don't really like these comments, so I'll just remove those, and I think that's it for the script. Okay, so now we're going to create the actual door. So it's going to be pretty simple, it's just going to be a few boxes. So create 3D object cube. I'll just make it 2 in height, um, I'll just put it 0, make it 0.1 in width. And then I'll just elevate it by one so that it's above the ground. Um, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to sort of like branch the um, the actual door from this. So I'll create an empty game object. I'll put it in zero one zero. Actually, no, I'll just put it in zero. Um, and then I'll child that to that object. Um, I'll actually move this back uh, zero point one because the door is going to be actually branching from this object instead of the door sort of, I'm not sure what you call that actually, the just door frame, I guess. Um, then we'll actually just create the door. So 3D object, 3D object cube. Um, just come from this again, zero. Um, and I'll just make it one in width, um, 0.45 I think it is, yep. Um, and I'll actually give that a parent again, so create empty, so, um, so that should be it, yep, okay. So basically what we'll do is, um, now the actual door graphics will rotate around that, so it doesn't rotate from the center. Okay, so now we've actually got to turn this into a held object, so it's like the game object parent. 
Uh, we're going to actually give this the box collider um, because this is going to be the actual held object because this is the actual object that's rotating rather than the graphics. So center one, um, what scale is this going to be? So it's going to be two, point one, and then I guess I shift it across 0.45. Um, yep, I'll remove the box collider from this because it might need it. Then I'll give this the door component and it'll automatically add all this. Uh, the connected body is going to be this cube right here. I, I'll have to give it a rigid body. Doesn't need its box collider. Um, and actually, yeah, drag it in again. Now we'll need to remove gravity. Um, it doesn't need to be kinematic though. Now, so we have to configure the held object. So pick up will be just, we'll actually just drag it in. Um, and then select door dot pickup, and then do the same with the drop. I'll have to do this every time you create a new type of interaction. Um, parent doesn't exist yet, and we'll set the min rotation to zero and the max rotation to one hundred and thirty-five. So it's just that'll be about. Actually, I can just show you. Um, so that'll just be about there. Uh, so that's the field of movement that it has. Um, I guess we've got to test that now. A few more things real quick. Um, just grab this cube, uh, remove gravity and make it kinematic, and then on the held object, change the axis from X to Y. Um, so if you play that, it will work, but it won't be restricted in how far it can rotate, so it'll just go around in circles as long as you pull it around. So to fix that, um, open up the script again, and we're going to create a... a it's just a joint limits, I think it's called. Uh, joint limits limits equals new joint limits. Um, so limits dot um, min equals min rot limits dot max equals max rot and um, get component hinge joint dot limits equals limits and then also I'll just copy this real quick generally if you're going to be getting a component more than about twice then you should probably just store it in a variable but this is fine uh, get component hinge joint dot use limits equals true so we should be good to go okay so one final thing uh, select the held object and actually make it so that it drops on release because it was a bit weird before because you had to press it again to drop it so that's everything. Uh, here's that now. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. You can grab it, pull it around. But yeah, as I said in the intro, um, there is no disconnect point. So we'll probably do that in the next episode. But yeah, if you had any ideas for the next video, make sure to leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, subscribe and enable notifications so you can know whenever I upload. See you in the next video.